So the new FX Impact Mark III is out. Whole new load of bells and whistles on it. Is it worth the money? More importantly, is it worth the money in sub 12 foot pound? Keep watching and I'll tell you my honest thoughts about the FX Impact Mark III. Hi there YouTubers, it's Steve here with another video for you from Ergonology. As I'm sure you're aware, on this channel we do a whole load of air rifles, air pistols and technology reviews. Um, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification down there. Also, check out the video description underneath in YouTube. In there you'll find a lot of links in there to our cool merchandising, our um, web store for um, Ergonology where you can get immersive optic scopes and 3D printing, our Facebook group is listed down there. And if you want to join our Facebook group, make sure you answer the questions, otherwise you won't be admitted into there. But yeah, most of the stuff is down there. But we're going to crack on with the FX Impact Mark III. All right, guys, so we have the new FX Impact Mark III. And as the title suggests, it is the third major revision of the rifle. Um, very, very distinctive. Down the side, you'll see it says M3 all over it. Is it any good? Well, it really does depend on which one you get as well. But um, overall, for those that don't want to watch the end of the video, I think it's actually very, very good. A tad expensive, yes. But you can get the impact in many, many varieties. And this video is out in late 2021. And I'm sure they've increased the line a little bit more. But at the moment, you can get it in a compact style, a standard style, which is this one, you can get it in a sniper style, and then you can get it in a 3.5 or 9mm version. Uh, so let's just go through them. So the compact style of the rifle is pretty much as the name says. It is a much smaller version. It has a shorter barrel of 500 mils. It weighs less, about 2.8. Um, its overall length is about 640 mils. Um, and it has a smaller bottle on it, it has a 300cc bottle. And I'll leave this in a table for you and I'll leave a link to the FX website where you can actually get all of this information. The standard version, which is the one you're gonna see the most, which this one is here, um, basically is a 600 millimeter barrel on it. It weighs a little bit more, about three and a bit uh, kilograms and it's about 850 to 60 mils long. The sniper one extends that barrel length out to 700 millimeters, weighs a little bit more, and it's about a meter long. Um, and that actually comes with a 580 cc bottle. Now, the one that I didn't mention is that the bottle size that you get in the standard is your standard 480 cc. So the sniper is really aimed for those guys that want to really start pushing bigger, heavier pellets out there, or the slugs, and the really aimed at the FAC people. And then you got the big boy out there, which is the 35 uh, caliber or the nine mil. Um, and that 
basically has an even bigger barrel on it, which is about an 800 mil barrel, weighs about three and a half kilograms, um, and again, has the bigger bottle. Now the bottles, you can actually upgrade your bottle sizes. As with most of the FX Impact rifles, you can do so many updates to these. You can swap the barrels out, swap the bottles out, change the dials out, add Picatinny rails all over it, do all sorts of stuff. Now, with these, you then start to look at the actual magazines themselves. So the calibers of the rifle you can get them at are 177, you can get it in a 22, you can get it in a 25, you can get it in a 30 and a 359 mil. Um, and they're now all now using the big style FX magazine here. Um, and I'll leave a little video playing on how you fill these up, but it's you take the top off, you turn it around, drop the first pallet in, load it up, put the top back on. I'll leave a video for you to see that. But with these, you're getting huge magazine counts. In the 177, you're getting 38 shots in here. 2.2, you're getting uh, 28. Uh, 2.5, you get 28. Um, in 3.0, you get 23. And then in the big 3.5 calibre, you're getting 18 shots in the magazine. So yeah, that's a lot in there. And as far as shot count goes, well, if you take it from the FX website, you're realistically looking at nearly 400 shots for the 177.22. And these are FAC numbers. Um, and when you get all the way down to the first, up to the 35 caliber you're looking at a full 45 shots out of one of these and that, that, that thing there and again I'll leave a table for you but basically you're ranging from 177 at 35 foot pound FAC all the way up to a massive 156 foot pound in 3.5 that is huge out of one shot so there is a whole load of specs out there a whole load of different ones you'll see them mixed and matched all over the place but at the end of the day we also have the sub 12 foot pound for the UK and those other markets where we have the nanny state laws that we're not allowed to do certain things. And that does come with quite a few gotchas. There's certainly quite a lot of bits missing out of that. But basically, sub 12 foot pound, one of these in 177, you'll easily put up a tin of pellets through one of these bottles, easily, well into the 500 shot count. And I'm not gonna sit there and put a whole tin through just to count it. I've got my old impact and I know it can do that as well. So what are the major differences over the Mark II that the Mark III brings into you? The biggest one that they bring to this is a dual regulating system in it. So there's two regulators. There's a regulator up at the front here, and there's a dial for it, and then there's the standard regulator at the back. Now, what's the point of this? A lot of the time what I've found with FX is, is you get what's called regulator creep. When you fire a shot, if you fire another shot pretty quickly after it, then the same feet per second you'll get over a chronograph. However, if you wait 30, 40 seconds and then fire that second shot, the power will be down and that's down to regulator creep. All that really that means is that the first, the first regulator is backed up by the second regulator. I'm not gonna get too technical into it or you don't really need to know. The thing that you do need to know is that that first regulator, basically FXA, do not touch it. Don't mess around with it. I know you guys in FAC will mess around with it, but they tell you not to do that. And it does have a gauge on the side for you to see that. The second regulator then is in your standard place for the FX impact. You read it at the back and it is adjustable for you FAC guys underneath the trigger as normal. Um, so you can set around and change that up. So does it solve the regulator creep problem? Well. I've had Mark IIs, I've had a couple of them and shot them and straight out the factory, they've had regulator creep. Uh, my Mark I, I had no end of problems with it as well. This one, I've stuck it over the chronograph and yes, it seems to solve the problem. Um, there is a little bit of variation which you'll get in different pellet weights, and especially if you're using unsorted pellets, but yes, it pretty much sorts it all out. Um, and the nice thing as well is you sub 12 foot pound guys, you do get the two regulators. Now those regulators are obviously blocked off so you can't change them easily. The next major, major thing is you can't see it on this rifle because it's a sub 12 foot pound, but basically I'll leave some pictures is they've set up what they call now quick tune. So on an impact normally what you've got is you've got your hammer spring dial at the side here and then you have a little 
area here where you could actually tighten up the hammer spring even more with an Allen key, tighten it all up there. So that's all to do with the hammer spring, how quickly that hammer's hit and how hard it's hit. And then you have the valve adjuster at the front. Um, typically then you turn that dial to get even finer tuning on how long the valve is left open and you can basically you can play, play with those three settings combined with your regulator gives you all the ability to set that all up but really it meant with the FX impact mark one and mark two you had to get out a set of allen keys and the tools and it was a bit of a pain in the backside. So what they've done is they've introduced this thing they're lovingly called quick tune and effectively what they, they've given some new terms. So the old hammer spring dial here, they call that now the macro adjuster. That's bigger steps of adjustment. Down at the front, next to where the hammer spring used to be, the bit that you used to actually have to tighten up with that Allen key, they're now calling that the micro adjuster and they put a dial on it. So literally you can dial it with your thumb, turn the big dial in steps of 16 increments and get your hammer tension absolutely perfect. And then at the front is on the valve timing, they've made that much bigger and you can turn that now spring loaded with your hand and you can turn that. Now that's all on the FAC versions. You do not get that on the sub 12 foot pound rifles. So what it basically means is that you've got ultimate adjustability on this. Um, you've got 16 clicks here. Each one of those clicks will give you anywhere between five and 15 foot pound, depending on your uh, regulator and your caliber size. And then you've got the smaller micro adjustments, which should do one or two foot pound. And then you've got your valve timing up the front here. If you do want to change the regulators, then they always suggest that you degas twist it, turn it so that you don't break your regulator. And they say really do not mess around with the front regulator, but I'm sure you guys will. So for all you FAC people, you've got all that adjustability now, pretty much most of it that you can just twist and dial, turn it all nicely marked out. And literally you can remember your settings. There's a big um, song and dance about how you can share settings and all that lot. At the end of the day, it's probably really simple. Forget all the marketing rubbish. What they've made is they've made the hammer spring tension stuff a lot easier to use, that you can don't need tools with it and the valve adjustment easy to use, but you're still gonna need tools and Allen keys to change the regulator pressure settings. The other thing that they brought into it as well is a new power plenum, and they're calling that power plenum the 720. It's actually a seven, uh, 72 cc plenum, a bigger plenum, more air in there, more regulation, easier for the rifle to work, more efficient, that again is on the, the uh, FAC versions. You do not get that on the sub 12 foot pound. Other things they brought to the game is they've improved the trigger. It's a full two stage trigger, much, much better improvement on that. Um, and they've changed the cocking lever as well. So the cocking lever now is a shorter throat and a bigger bolt, you know, the old biathlon. But more importantly, they've allowed you now to move that cocking lever from left side to right side and vice versa. Now that's really nice for somebody who's right hand shoot and speed shoot, because that means you keep your finger where the trigger area is on the actual grip of the rifle. And you can now just cock the rifle backwards and forwards with this hand for speed shooting. But also it's very handy for those left-handed shooters on there. So you can now change the cocking lever to the other side. Um, they've also now added 20 MOA rake, and this is uplift into the Picatinny rail. And the reason behind that is for those longer distances now, uh, so you can get better scope reach. You may find that you might then need to start shimming scopes, um, but the ones that I've used have been pretty good out to 25 meters, but that there's an MOA lift up on here, which will mean that quite a lot of those people that needed adjustable mounts, you don't need them anymore. The safety catch, they've changed it. <laughs> Before, fire was up. Now fire is forward, so that's all changed as well. Nice distinct click on there. Uh, so that's changed. And other things that they've changed as well is they've tightened up some of the tolerances on the barrels um, and how the barrels are all mounted, um, how the breech, that's all been tolerances and tightened up, um, how the magazine fits in, that now is a lot tighter, a lot more precise, and there's less rattling going on around there. And they've added new gauges, I think they call them wicker um, gauges on here uh, for your pressures and your regulators on there. 
So those are the major, major changes for the Mark III. A lot of you guys ask, can you put these changes onto a Mark II? Not really. Um, there's too much going on, especially around all of the micro adjustments on here, the hammer tension, the valve stuff. In, unfortunately, you know, you brought a Mark II, Mark III's out. That's the way life is, unfortunately. But um, yeah, quite a lot of changes on there. Okay guys, for those that are unfamiliar with the impact, um, and there's probably not many of you out there, let's have a bit of a walk around of the rifle. Now this rifle, thank you Eric, um, one of my admins on the Facebook group, he's lent me this rifle for a good few months uh, to do a review on, have a play with. So thank you very much Eric. And what this one here is, is this is a sub 12 foot pound 177. Um, it is a standard version, so it's not a compact or a sniper or anything like that. And it comes with the Smooth Twist X with the superior barrel liner in it. But let's walk around the rifle. Now, a couple of things I will highlight straight away that you do not get. Eric has loves spending money. He's um, basically gone and splashed out on a Sabre tactical buttstock and monopod at the back here. Um, really helps with bench rest shooting, nice in the shoulder as well. He's stuck a spirit level on here as well. And he's also gone for the Sabre um, Picatinny rail at the bottom here. So, you know, um, I'll give you some rough prices. That Sabre Picatinny rail on its own uh, is, is about 150 pounds. Uh, the buttstock and Everything on the back is nearly 400 pounds, and he's also put in um, a. And he wanted me to point this out. Look at that! How pretty is that? He's even got a personalised hug it on the end of it all. But apart from that, the rest of it is stock. So let's walk around. So let's go from the back. So at the back here, you just get your standard butt plate on here. Obviously, it won't look like this. I'll leave a picture for you. But nice and simple standard butt plate on there. Um, one, then what we've got is the magazine system here. So I, again, I've shown you how to load the magazines in. Magazine in, like so, and it clicks in. And this is what they call their side shot lever, uh, side shot system. So the magazine clicks in. You notice how far it sticks out. So a lot of people ask about left hand shooting. You cannot switch this around, this magazine. It always has to go in from the right hand side. So if you're left hand shooting, some people find that gets in the way and it really depends on how you set your scope up. So then we have a cheat rest at the back here. This is held on by four Allen bolts. Now it's curved for a right-handed shooter. You, if you switch this to be a left-handed cocking lever, this unit on the back here will be up, the curve will be in the wrong place for you. Um, you can obviously go and buy some aftermarket ones and there'll be plenty of people doing 3D printing on this. At the back here, we have our regulator gauge. So this is your second main regulator gauge on here. You can see that. Now in the sub 12 foot pound, this one is running absolutely sweet and is running at about 55 uh, bar on there for the regulator. Moving down, we have an AR-15 style grip. Again, standard stuff so that can be taken out, replaced. We have the safety catch here. And like we said before, on the Mark III, this is now the opposite way. Safe is up fire is forward, all linked into a fully new adjustable two-stage trigger. Um, loads of adjustment in there, nice blade, really, really good trigger. I do like the trigger on this. Nice new feature that they've added on as well is a magnetic fill cover for the port. So here's your fill port down here, um, really handy. Um, why didn't they do that ages and ages ago? I do not know, but that is really nice on there. Now, normally under here, you'll get a small Picatinny rail, but this is all being swapped out with the Sabre Tactical uh, pick rail system on here um, as a nice upgrade. And a lot of people are doing this. It gives you a lot more reach to put bipods on. You've got your bottle, which on the standard version would be a 480cc, 250 bar fill. Then we have the barrel system itself. Now, obviously, depending on which one you get, whether you get the compact, the uh, standard, or the sniper, the barrel lengths will change. But basically, as with all FX rifles, is that you can take the whole barrel system out from 177, move it up to a 22, change the pellet probe through, and basically, you've got two rifles in one, a 177, a 22. And if you really wanted to, you can go and buy extra barrels, extra liners, liners for slugs. It, it's just ongoing. Basically, um, there's that many options out there with FX that you can do that. So it really does cater for everyone. 
At the front here, we have, um, they give you a standard um, unbranded uh, moderator or silencer on the front, but um, it's a half UNF on there. Um, most people will put aftermarket ones on. So on this one here, Eric's put a hug it on there. Really nice, simple. Um, barrel just slides out, pellet probes in, new barrel in there. Got, remember though, if you're sub 12 foot pounds, you've got to bring that rifle back down. You remember, 2.2 requires less air. So if you're running at 12 foot pound, 177, do not throw a 2.2 a, a barrel in there. You'll be running higher. You'll need to detune the rifle. Um, so remember that. Pick rails galore. Like we said, 20 mil MOA rake on here. I've got this fitted up here with the immersive optics 14 by 50 prismatic scope. Absolutely beautiful fit for this rifle. Just suits it really well. Great big field of view. And the shooting I've done is all with this on here. So we've got pick rails all over the place on the sides, on the top, on the bottom. Um, if we spin it around on this side, we here, we have the fill pressure. So when you filled up on there, 250 bar fill, fill it up through there. So it's a Foster's on there, read the pressure on there. Flip the rifle round. On the other side, we have the first regulator gauge on here. And it's just reading your number on here. And this one is set and it's running. Let's just read that. It's running at about 110 bar, 120 bar. Um, like I said, FX do not recommend you change that at all. You leave that as cocking lever to the side. Again, you can flip that round. This one has been flipped round to the left hand side so that you can do that rapid quick fire shooting while still keeping hold of the rifle. So really, really nice on there. Beautiful anodizing all over the place. At the front is your valve timing. Now obviously on the sub 12 foot valve, it's different. So you would have seen the pictures earlier and your micro um, quick tune system down here with the macro and the micro adjusters on here for the hammer tension. And again, in the sub 12 foot pound, these are locked out. Um, plenum area down the side. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much more really to write home about. Okay, so we're back out at 25 meters. Let's do a bit of target work for a bit of fun. Um, we've got a rough zero, it'll do for now. Let's see how we get on. <laughs> I decided to carry on on the same time. That's 37 shots. Okay, guys, with a rifle like this, it will just be a crying shame not to take it out to bigger distances. So I'm going to carry on using the stand to try and remove as much human error out of this as possible. We're going to keep using the same QIS 177 pellets. We're out at 45 meters. I'm right backed up to my hedge line here. It's so about as far as I can go. And uh, let's give it a go, see what we do. <laughs> Got full magazine, we'll just see what happens, shall we?
This is getting silly. I'm gonna change target. Okay, let's change again. This is just stupidly accurate. I think you get the idea. That's probably some of the best shooting that I've ever done. Um, that is very close on a par to the, my Daystate Red Wolf. Uh, 45 meters, I've only been playing with the rifle for a couple of hours. Um, QYS pallets, 177, you've got to remember this is sub 12 foot pound. I'm mightily impressed, that is accurate. Well, I hope you like that because of, I was just blown away by this rifle. Um, unsorted pellets, um, QYSs. I didn't do any pellet testing. Um, I have tried different pellets and they all seem to be pretty good, JSBs. But Eric, he set the rifle up with QYSs. He's been through the rigmarole of doing it all. So I use these and I'm not joking, the first set of shots. Normally I'd, I'd sit some music on and I'd start shooting different. I, I was just having so much fun. That there at 25 meters was a full magazine of 38 pellets and I was not taking my time. I was going quite quick. 25 meters, that, that hole just got bigger and bigger as my point of aim. Yeah, 25 meters. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I pushed it out a bit further because people do want to see that. Um, so we went out and I know this says 50 on it, it's not, it's 45 meters as far as I can go in my backyard. And I'll tell you what, accurate, absolutely. You know I'm not a great shot. There's seven or eight in each one of those, probably more on there. And 45 meters, it's only about the fourth or fifth time that I shot the rifle properly after getting used to it. Is it on a par with my Red Wolf? I'll tell you what, it is so close between this and the Red Wolf. People say to me that you've spent two grand on a rifle, it's not as good as my 350. My 350 pound rifle can out shoot you. Rubbish. Yes, if you spent a long time on that rifle, maybe if you've modded it, messed around of it. I am telling you now, this thing is on the par with the Red Wolf. I have shot multiple rifles, and this thing is one of the most accurate I've ever shot. I think Giles once said it in his videos, it's like a laser. It is, it is absolutely deadly accurate. 177, um, that's the best shooting I've done in a long time out to 45 meters in a 177 sub 12 foot pound. Stupidly accurate. Um, yeah, it, there's no other way of saying it. Okay, so time for conclusions. Is the Mark III worth it? Should I buy a Mark III if I've got a Mark II? Um, should I buy one in sub 12 foot pound? There's a lot of questions I'm sure you guys want me to answer. So let me do my usual pros and cons. And as usual, this is a borrowed rifle. It's not been given to me by FX or anything. I can say what I want. So here we go. Let's go with the pros. Accuracy. Yeah, it is up there. It's like the hot lap of top gear. It's right there with the Red Wolf. Um, absolutely fantastic. <coughs> I think in some cases it might even beat it. Um, it is stupidly accurate in sub, uh, in sub 12 foot pound. Um, in FAC, I'm sure you can go and have a look at loads of other videos and it is accurate as well with those in the higher foot pounds. Um, other pro, fully, fully adjustable. With all of the micro and the macro, quick tune systems and the valve timing systems and the fact that you can change the regulator on here, set it up. It's got all the scales where you can actually read off your settings and remember them. Absolutely brilliant. This is a tuner's dream of a rifle. Everything is there that you want if you're FAC. If you're not FAC, that's a lot of money wasted, really, when you think about it. But um, for the FAC guys, they're absolutely everything you could possibly want. Build quality. Well, I know there's a lot of haters out there. There's haters for Daystate and there's haters for FX. Now, 
every rifle company, they would have a few lemons come out of a factory, a Friday special. And we hear the horror stories all over the internet because only bad news travels. Nobody's there to say how good they are. I've owned quite a few FXs and generally the build quality is absolutely fantastic. And the build quality on this, the metal work, the bluing, the blacking, the all the bits and absolutely beautiful. Not a single thing I can see wrong with this. Now, obviously you may get a lemon and that happens a lot. Yes, there are a lot of moving parts. There's 250 bars of pressure and all those atoms trying to escape these little seals. Yes, it's got lots of seals all over it, but um, this one, absolutely fantastic. And it's not been played with at all. The looks. Uh, it's a bit of a, do you like it? I like this style of rifle. I think it's nice. I know a lot of you don't. Um, a lot of you might want to mod it and change ways. Will they bring out wooden stock versions? I've no idea. The looks, I like the looks. I think it's really nice. It's in keeping with the FX Impact Mark 1, Mark 2. It's just been sort of like grown up a bit, made a bit bigger, a bit more sexier. And I like the all black version of it and the M3 logos, really nice. A lot of you people will not like the looks of them at all. The large shot count, it's a pro and a con really. I'll talk about the con later, but you you know, 38 shots in one of these, it's just crazy. Um, two, two, 28 shots. Um, yeah, you fill this thing up and yeah, they take a bit of time to fill, but absolutely, yeah, massive shot count in there. Combine that with the 480cc bottle, you're well over 500 shots per fill. The fact that you can get this in loads of different versions, and if you're watching this in two years time, there's probably even more different versions of it. You can get it in the compact version, the standard, the sniper, the 35 cal 9 mil version, and I'm sure they'll bring out loads of us. And then bits that you can add onto it, all the accessories, like the accessories here that Eric's put on his, with the Sabre Tactical bits and pieces on there. You know, you look around, this is probably one of the most modern rifles out there. Um, you're not going to be stuck for parts for it at all. And of course you've also got the thing that the fact is if you do want to you can swap the barrels out and you basically you get two or three rifles in one. Yes you do have to set it all up, run it over a chrono, it's not a quick process, it takes about 20 minutes to swap the barrels out and then of course you need to re-zero set it all up. But it can be done, you get two rifles in one, that 177 for target shooting, that 30 cal if you want it for um, for quarry shooting, um, yeah it can be done. However, there are some bad sides, the bad sides. Well, ranging from 1800 to 2000 pounds, depending where you look. And obviously these prices may change depending when you're watching video, but that is a back end of, uh, back end of 2021. So 1800 quid to 2000 pounds, that is a lot of money. And a lot of people go, oh, it's way too much money, etc. Well, some people can afford it. Some people like to buy stuff like that. And you are certainly buying the top end rifles now. My Red Wolf up there is a two grand rifle. I bought that because I wanted it and I knew it would shoot good and it does shoot good. I am so tempted to buy one of these. Yes, it's another two grand rifle, but it certainly performs. It is up there. It is one of the best ones. So the price really comes down to how much money you earn, how much disposable you've got. But is it worth the price? I think so, to be brutally honest, if you can afford it. Um, if you can only afford a £300 rifle, then unfortunately, you're not going to get one. Um, there's not a lot you can do about it, so stop whinging, stop moaning. Um, the looks, again, downside. Some people hate the looks of this tactical rifles. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I like it. Really, really nice. Let's come right to the elephant in the room. Sub 12 foot pound. Is it worth it for two grand? This rifle, like most rifles, are designed for FAC shooters. All of the tunability with the quick tune, being able to change the hammer tension spring, the valve timing, the regulator, it's all there for FAC people. Those people that want to shoot up to 100, 150 foot pounds, that's what it's there for. You buy a two grand rifle, all of those bells and whistles are restricted to you in sub 12 foot pounds. You do not get the quick tune in on here, you do not get valve timing, you do not get the extra large plenum on here. So some will say, well, why is it not cheaper? Well, we wish it was cheaper for a sub 12 foot pound if I'm going to lose all those features. But they're locked out to you. Um, however, when this rifle comes and is set up properly, which it is through your good RFD, actually 
it works out to be a beautiful, stupidly accurate 177 rifle. Can I say, is it worth the two grand with all of those features taken out? I can't say that at all, only you can decide that. But I want you to be aware that if you do get a sub 12 foot version of this, you're not gonna get all those features. So you decide whether it's there. It's nice that you can turn the power down, which you can do on a lot of rifles, so that you're not shooting through barn walls. But yeah, you've not got all of that adjustability in there. And a lot of people say it's wasted. It's a con. There's no way of getting around it. The magazine, I still hate them. I still hate the FX magazines. I struggle to get that magazine in there uh, in properly. I don't like the way you have to load them. They rattle, but it's a large shot magazine. They take forever to fill up as well. But yeah, that's just one of my pet gripes. I do not like the FX magazines. I really, really don't. But they're functional, they do the job, and they cost a fortune as well. What else have we got on here? Um, availability. Yeah, you're going to struggle to get one. With COVID and the short um, supply of everything coming in, you may have to be on a waiting list. FX, basically, there is a waiting list. Um, people trying to get these. If you do manage to get hold of one, you will love it. I think you will. And it certainly will keep its resale value for quite some time until the Mark IV comes out. But absolutely, yeah, really, really cr cracking. Like we said, it's really a designed FAC type rifle. Um, a joy to shoot, absolute joy to shoot. One other thing that you'll notice about it as well is when you fire it, you will hear this little hissing sound. And this is not a bad point about the rifle, but just be aware of it. And that is basically, well, I think Jal said it once nicely, it says it's breathing. And that's pretty much what it's doing. What you can hear is the air pressure coming into the plenum area through the regulators. And you fire and you hear this, a little hiss. Don't worry about it, it's totally normal. But I thought I'd throw it out there for those people that like it and want to know. I get asked a lot of questions about left-handers. Um, this is another con, um, and FX, like most rifle guys out there, they don't really care about left-handers, unfortunately. Yes, you can swap the bolt to the other side, but the magazine always still goes in this side. And I've spoken to a lot of left-handers that shoot these rifles. If you can get that actual scope in the right position, that it doesn't obstruct you when you get your head down with the magazine, yes, it can be done. And it's nice that you can switch the bolt to the other side with the Mark III, it helps. But it's not designed, if you're a left-hander, I really suggest you go and have a play with one, have a shoot with one before you part with your hard-earned cash. Okay, and then the final one is basically snobbery, brand snobbery. Uh, it's FX, we hate FX, it's day state, we hate day state. To be brutally honest, I don't care. Um, if it works and it shoots right, I'm happy. I love my Red Wolf. I also have an FX Impact up there. I would love one of these as well. Um, I think it is a cracking, cracking rifle. So to sum it all up, is it worth the money for sub 12 foot pound? <laughs> yes, I think it is. Um, should you get one if you got a Mark II? Probably not unless you can sell the Mark II and get one of these. Um, but is it worth it? Yeah, I, I think it's a cracking, cracking rifle. It's certainly a big step up from the Mark II. It's a lot more accurate, it solves a lot of the problems. I think it looks sexier, certainly worth the money. So I'd love to know your thoughts and comments. Let's try to keep this brand snobbery and its FX, its day state, all that out of it all, please. We're all bored of it. I'm totally bored of it on the group as well. Um, at the end of the day, rifles are you know, if they work, they work really well. Every rifle has issues, um, and I'm sure, and bad news always travels fast. But I'd love to know your thoughts on the Mark III. Do you want one? Have you got one? What do you think of it? Love to know. Catch you on the next video.